Hi everyone, before I start my video I'd like to quickly mention an event that's taken place within the UK Cloud Magnets group which I'm a member of. So Mick Scott and Paul Hackett are doing a sponsored bike ride from John of Groats to Land's End and this is in aid of some charities, um, one of which is the Scottish Dark Sky Observatory which unfortunately burned down last year. So uh, lots of people are helping to raise money to rebuild this. Uh, Mick and Paul are riding from John and Groats to Land's End. Now they've got a video uh, which I've put a link in my description below to their video. So if you'd like to find out a little bit more about that then please click the link below. So thanks for that and now back to my video. Well it's supposed to be clear tonight so I'm going to set the rig up for the first time in about three weeks. Now I've been asked to show exactly how I set the rig up from start to finish including going through what all the different components are, what everything does and if you're new to astrophotography and you've always wondered how we take images of deep space objects stick around and you'll find out. I'm Simon and you're watching Simon's Astro. So it is important to set the tripod on a solid level base. I use these wooden blocks with holes drilled out of the middle so that the spikes on the bottom of the tripod feet can go into and that stops the tripod sinking into the grass. Obviously it's better if you can set it on a solid base like slabs or a concrete pad or something but this is the best place I have to image and unfortunately it's on the grass so this is what I do to get over that. So the next thing I do is I use this compass app on my phone which I put on top of the tripod and I put it square against this square pin here and I can move the tripod around slightly to get it roughly pointing to north doesn't matter if it's not pointing exactly at north because I can always get it on the adjustments with the adjustment knobs on the mount so we have to make sure the tripod is level so I check it in two directions that way and that way now this side has got to come up a little bit so I'll just adjust that get that right and that's not far out at all a little adjustment there that's pretty good so the mount I'm going to be putting on top of the tripod is the Skywatcher EQ6R Pro now that's got a payload of 20 kg and the scope I'm going to be fitting on top of it that weighs around nine and a half kg but then when I've loaded it up with all the bits and pieces I've added to the top of the scope that's going to weigh about 13 kg so it's still well within the capacity of the EQ6R Pro mount and the scope I'm going to be fitting on top of the mount is the Skywatcher Esprit 120 which has a focal length of 840 mil and that's an F7 so let's get the mount on important to get the weights on next before we put the scope on. I'm using three 5k weights with the rig I've got here. toe cap back on. That's also very important to protect your feet. So once the weights are on, it's then safe to get the telescope on. And this weighs quite a bit. That's why it's important to make sure it's got weights on it before you put the scope on. Right, that's on. I'll now go through all the different bits and get all the wires connected. So firstly this little blue box is the Pegasus Power Box Advance. This is a power distribution box. It's got a couple of dual heater sockets. There's a little sensor there which 
plugs in the end here and that determines the dew point which puts power automatically to the dew heater straps. This is one of the dew heater straps on the main scope and there's another dew heater strap here on the guide scope. So this is the actual guide scope, it's the Skywatcher 50ED, it's 250mm and attached to that at the end here is the ZWO120 mini guide camera. So this little red box here is the ASIA Plus and this is what controls everything. It's got an antenna here, it's connected to my iPad by Wi-Fi and this is what controls the whole rig. And further down here is the actual camera, this is the main camera, this is the ZWO2600 MC Pro, it's a one shot colour camera and in here is a filter drawer and I currently have a two inch Optolong Alextreme filter in there you just unscrew the filter out, you can put different filters in and that goes in there, it's held in by magnets and this little red box is the EAF, that's the electronic automatic focuser and it's also by ZWO and that controls the focus and you've probably heard me go on about this before this is the Ioptron iPolar it's a little electronic device it has a camera here and this is how we do my polar alignment and polar alignment is basically aligning the whole rig the mount to the North Star which is the uh, All Star Polaris and as so long as you've got a good polar alignment you'll be able to keep really nice sharp stars so now I'm going to connect all the cables. So the next thing you have to do is balance the scope. Right away to take off the lens caps, especially these ones because these are heavy, these are metal, and they can affect the way it balances. So firstly, we'll balance it this way. And it's well out of balance, so I've got to adjust weights. And always check it the other way. So that feels about right. We check it this way. That's a little bit heavy. Just got to drop it down a little bit. Looks nicely balanced. So now the rig is all together and the cables are in. I'm going to get the power pack, which will put power to the mount and to the camera so I can start cooling the camera sensor down. So by having the scope set up like this with everything attached to the scope itself, all I have to do is bring one wire from the battery up to the Pegasus power box, the little blue box on the top, and that distributes power to the ASI Air Plus, to the electronic focuser, to the camera, and to the mount. So I've just got one lead coming up to the box. Um, oh, it also puts power to the two two heater straps as well. So this is my Jackery power pack, and it is a full 12 volts, 10 amps. And all I have to do is take this lead up to the Pegasus bar box. So I run it through the legs, take that up to here. And so that's now plugged in. And that powers the whole rig. We'll switch on the mount. I'll switch on the ASIA Plus and now I've just got to connect the iPad. So now to connect the rig to the iPad, I go to Wi-Fi, tap on the ASIA, that will connect because the ASIA is putting out its own Wi-Fi signal, that's now connected. So I go to the ASIA app and then I just have to hit enter. Just check the information here. Okay, that's all okay. Go to enter and now we're into the ASI Air app. So here is where we check the camera's been called down to minus 10, switch on anti do, set it track into on. Now I've just got to set it up for polar alignment. So now I plug my lead into the polar scope here 
and I plug the other end into my laptop. This is the only time I use my laptop. It's for my polar alignment. I like to use the iPolar for my polar alignment rather than the polar aligning app, which is actually in the ASI Air Plus. I'd rather use this method. It's a method that I've used ever since I started astrophotography and it's one that I get on with really well, really quickly, and I think it gives a really accurate polar alignment. And I'm not alone in this thing, and there are a few others that have come to this way of thinking as well. It doesn't mean that the ASI Air app is, is not very good. By all accounts, it is very good. This is just my preference. All I have to do now is go into the iPolar app on the laptop. So I'm just going to connect to the app now. That's connected. So I go to settings and I have to wait to take a dark frame. I don't know whether you can see that, but it's counting down. It says take dark frame. Four, three, two, one. Here we go. Take dark frame. Go OK. OK. Close that. Take the little cap off and hopefully we'll see some stars. Wow. If you can see that, we're very close already. I've only got to make a slight adjustment. There we go. That's pretty good. Okay, that's that done. It only took a few seconds, so I can close that. And now I can disconnect from the laptop. I don't need that anymore. That's the polar alignment complete. Right, next thing is to find a star bright enough to focus on. So the star I'm going to use to focus with is going to be Arcturus. So I know I've used that before. Go into my history. There's Arcturus. Tap that. Hit go to, and the mount is now slewing to the star Arcturus. Once it's got there, I'll be able to do a focus. I will check it with the uh, Batonoff mask first to get it as focused as close as possible. Then I will start the EAF routine going. So it's now Sendra and Arcturus and hopefully it'll take a little image to show that I've got it in the frame and that it's fairly good, this target is centered. Just wait for that to come up and we'll see how good the focus is. Okay, that's not too bad. If I quickly put the pattern off mask on and I will take another image. So there you can see the focus is off a little. So I'll just make an adjustment. I will set that to fast. And I will try a couple of movements. Let's change that exposure to three seconds. Hit start again, take another image and see if I've got the focus a little bit better. Okay, that's pretty good. So now I can take the button off mask off and I can set the EAF going. So all I have to do now is go to the AF and hit the run button and that's now started the focus routine going and once it's completed it will tell me that it's in focus and I can then slew around my target. So focus is found on the EAF and that looks absolutely fine. So I just close that and I'm going to do a test shot. I've put the button off mask bag on. I like to double check it just to make sure and that says it's Perfect focus, so we're in business. So now I'm going to go to my target, which is IC1396, otherwise known as the elephant's trunk. So the last thing to do now is to set the guide and going. And it's going to do its calibration, and once it's done, I can then start imaging on my target. So the guide scope and the guide camera locks onto a star or stars and sends little pulses back to the mount so that the mount can make adjustments, very slight adjustments, and it helps to keep the stars on track. Well, if you can see that flashing up on the screen, it says star is lost. That's because the clouds have rolled in. It had completed its calibration and it was actually guiding. Um, and it was guiding at 0.57, which is not too bad, but unfortunately the clouds have come in 
and uh, the um, guy star is lost, so this session might be ended before I've even got started. Well, unfortunately, I think the clothes are here to stay, so I'm just going to have to pack the rig away, and the next clear sky I get, I will come back and set it all up and carry on, hopefully, with this target. I might even choose a different target, who knows. Um, there was no moon tonight, there was no wind, it would have been the perfect night, but the clouds have come in to spoil things, so that's it for tonight. I'll catch you next time. There is a bee flying in front of the camera. That wasn't part of the plan. <laughs> it's still flying in front of the camera. I better wait for this to go. And the scope I'm going to be fitting on top of the mount is the what's it, Skywatcher? Skywatcher, I suppose. And I always take off the lens caps, especially these because these are metal. that again <laughs> so it doesn't matter if it's not totally right oh. so I've been asked to show how I set up my rig so I'm gonna <laughs> oh, 